Good morning.
Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwell righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Some things in this book are very hard to be understood. And when I come across people that can explain everything, I just got to go, huh? <laughs> There's a lot of things in there you can't explain. There's some things that will not be explained until the hereafter. But does that mean we don't dig in? Does that mean we don't ask questions? Does that mean we don't follow Jesus wherever he goes? Even if sometimes it doesn't feel right? Because if we're just going to trust feelings and everything's about emotion, then we're going to be led in the wrong way. Amen. We have a clear, thus saith the Lord in, the, in this Bible. We have it for a reason. Because that's what we hang our hat on. That's what we can build on. That's the cornerstone. You follow me? That's your foundation. I, brothers and sisters, I, I love people. I really do. I care about people. And, and, and I have forgiveness for brother, my brothers and sisters. As I want my brothers and sisters to forgive me. But I got to tell you, I'm shuddering right now to think that I would lay down any, thus saith the Lord, so that I could supposedly love someone. How in the world do you separate God from His commandments? That's ripping His character out of who He is. How is it offensive that I don't murder somebody? How is it offensive that I don't steal from my brother? Or that I don't covet my neighbor's wife? How is it offensive? How is it offensive that I don't bow down before some idol? Some graven image that somebody says it's okay for me to do. Is that wrong? What about a special 24-hour period that God at the beginning of time said that he sanctified and he made holy this certain Sabbath time when God made Adam and Eve the first thing he told him to do was rest. Rest. He didn't tell me, you pick what day you want to rest. He said, you rest. I have completed everything. I've given you all things. All I'm to do is to, to keep and cherish and love. What? What God has said is holy and just and true. Amen. Right? If we don't have, thus saith the Lord, if we don't have these things, what do we have? Look, you've got to pull the mask off Satan. He is so cunning. He can make it sound so wonderful. He can make it so beautiful. Well, Proverbs talks about the, you know, the woman that's got the sweet words and Brings you down a road that leads right to H-E double toothpaste, right? Is that love? But sure feels good though, doesn't it? I don't see anything divisive about the commandments of Almighty God. Do I hear an amen anymore? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, because the whole world, as this gentleman has said, is, is, is coming together. It's, it's happening before our eyes. We're all just going to get together in love and throw down all these, well, we don't need all these commandments. You know, we'll work it all out in heaven. Doesn't it sound nice? Oh, just wonderful. 
No. What was the what was the Reformation all about? What was it about? It was about getting back to the Bible, wasn't it? Amen. It was about following the Holy Scripture, right? Not about traditions. I delivered a load this week. Well, not this week. It was last week. Anyways, I had a big old beard here this morning. It's gone now. My wife's happy about that. So am I. But I delivered this place down at Mardi Gras. Well, it's, it's, well, it was Wednesday. It was the day after Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras down there in Louisiana is called Fat Tuesday. Okay? I'm sitting like crazy on Tuesday because Wednesday's the beginning of Lent. So now we have a whole brain. Now we can, oh, we can, uh, oh, what do you do? Give up something you really love, like hot dogs or something. Afflict your soul. It doesn't make sense to me. Live like the devil on Tuesday so you can afflict your soul on Wednesday for 40 days? It doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't make sense at all. What is that? Is that, in, is that in the scriptures? Or is that a tradition of men? Men. A tradition of men. It's such a tradition of men that you can't even haul a wide load in the state of Louisiana on, on Fat Tuesday nor Wednesday. It's a, it's a holiday. I don't want to follow tradition. I want to follow Jesus. Amen. I hope that you all do too. And your amen tells me that you do. On verse 17, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and now. And forever. Amen. Amen. Let's turn back into Isaiah. You guys already got the Bible warmed up over there. Isaiah 28. I must have these fans set perfect. It's not even turning my page. Isaiah 28. Anybody know what verse I'm going to read from? 28? Take a test. Um, ten. 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 For precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little very little. What is that telling us? What's that telling us? Word, chapter by chapter, word by word. So that we're, we're to, to understand the Bible in that way, aren't we? Yeah. To go to go from chapter to chapter, verse to verse. To understand the Bible, you can't just pick something out. Isn't that what it's saying? Amen. Let's just pick something out. Let's turn to uh, Psalm. Psalm, 80, Psalm 82. Let's go to Psalm 82. Everybody there? Psalm 82, verse 6. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. What if we stop right there? You're gods? That's what it said, right? Yeah, a little G though. Yeah. Oh yeah. But still, gods? But what's the next verse say? <laughs> but you shall die like men. And fall like one of the princes. We don't take scripture and just pull out little pieces like that and build a theology upon it. We have to go line upon line, precept upon precept. We have to understand our Bible by using the whole Bible and allowing the Bible to interpret itself. Amen? Amen. I don't find anything offensive here. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42, beginning in verse 7. 
Isaiah 42, verse 7. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and to let them sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you them. What is he saying that before <coughs> things spring forth, he tells us? He tells us. He knows the future. He does know the future, doesn't he? And he's warned us in the future, hasn't he? Amen. Has he given us the three angels' message? <coughs> Do we want to water that message down? No. What does that message say? Fear God. <coughs> Give glory to him. Give um, glory to him. For the hour of his judgment, judgment has is come. Yeah. Is come. Is that what the world says? Do we have a special message? Was this church raised up for a certain particular job? Yeah. Listen, what is a piece of a remnant? The original. It's a genuine, right? Of a pattern. If I gave, if I gave Barb, if I gave you a pattern for a dress, right? <laughs> and you had the material, and you set out to follow that pattern. Would you make a pair of blue jeans? That's all that no. is. How could she? Right? If she's following the pattern, what's she going to make? She's going to make a dress. If Jesus is the pattern, right? We're going to follow the pattern. What are we going to do? We're going to look like Jesus, aren't we? We're going to care about what he cared about. We're going to love the way he loved. Right? Why do they blindly get in the boat? Why do they blindly get in the boat? I'll tell you why. They don't believe the truth. Some of them. Some of them don't know any better. But when the Lord God calls, they will come. And they're going to come someplace that has the truth. I've said this a few times. I really want to get this to help people understand this. What really matters is the scripture, that you know the scripture, because that comes from Jesus. Okay? I'm not talking about I'm not talking about having the scripture. Okay? I'm talking about having the scripture. Turn on. You know the people that are going to suffer most in these concentration camps are going to be the affluent. The ones that had it real easy. They had everything handed to them. You know, servants and the whole deal. But you know who they're going to be looking to? They're going to be looking to the wayward little people like you and me that are full of scripture. Because you know what's going to matter when nothing else matters? The people who know Jesus. And the people that have that precious, beautiful, Scripture buried in their hearts. <coughs> they are going to shine in that wherever place that they're at. And everybody's going to want to have what they have. That isn't something we throw away just to say we love each other. I'm all for loving each other. But there has to be what Jesus cares about. I need to care about. You need to care about. Let's turn to Luke. Luke chapter 12. <coughs> Starting in verse 49. This, these are Jesus' words. I think these are, are these written in red. In the Bible? Yeah. Okay. Because I want you to understand that these aren't my words. These are Jesus' words. I am come to send fire on the earth, 
And what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptized, I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straight till it all be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five and one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, and the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, and the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said also to the people, When you see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, There cometh a shower, and it is so. And when you see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that you do not discern this time? Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? What is Jesus saying? Why do you judge not of yourselves what is right? I love my brothers and sisters, and I'm talking about my family. Okay? Not my church family, my personal family. If there comes a point where I have to come against Jesus, <coughs> And against thus saith the Lord, then I am going to drop them like a hot potato, and I am going to choose Jesus Christ every single time. They can come with me, and I'll still love them, if, even if they don't, but I won't go that way without Jesus. Turn to Luke, we're still here already. Right? Sick. Yes, yeah, that's what these new leaders are preaching. They're preaching the promoting unity and they're saying division is diabolical. We exactly. all need to be in one big basket. Exactly. So I'm not preaching a very nice message. According to them, I'm 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 safe. Right? Think of that. That's what we're doing, is we're unmasking the evil one. Because he is so it sounds all so wonderful. Think about it. Didn't Jesus preach love? He did. <coughs> Listen, in your song, you talked about when he made that whip of cords in the, in the temple, right? Yeah. Well, the people who were doing wrong ran out, didn't they? Yeah. But the little children come to him while he's whipping a cord? They come to him. Why? Why? There's no fear there, is there? Why? Because they see love. How can you have love without love? <coughs> you can't. You cannot. Thank you for your comment. Luke 6, 46. Luke 6, 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Can you hear your mother or your father talking to you that way? <laughs> can you? I can. Will God judge wickedness? Yes. yes. Turn your Bibles to Micah. Micah <coughs> chapter 5. Pretty close to the middle of your Bible. The little minor prophets with major things to say. Little teeny books. We all get there just hard. Yeah. Micah 5, 10 through 15. That's what we're going to read. Micah 5, 10 through 15. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots. And I will cut off the cities of thy land and throw down all thy strongholds. And I will cut off witchcrafts out of thy hand. And thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images also will I cut off. And thy standing images out of the midst of thee. And thou shalt no more worship the work of thy hands. 
and I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Do you think God's a little serious about some things? Yeah. Do you think we ought to be serious about those things too? Or do you think we should just kind of be wishy-washy? No, really. If something offends God, then it ought to offend you. That doesn't mean that we are somebody that's supposed to be cleaning anybody. That's God's job. All we do is carry the fish to the master fisherman and let him clean the fish. I can't even clean myself, but I won't clean any of you. I need to be clean. But that doesn't mean I throw out, thus saith the Lord. Never. Never would I do that. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the reason I'm in the Seventh-day Adventist church is because of thus saith the Lord. I don't know.